Look at that. There's little bro. A rental man buck. His nice Pontiac white shiny turd. Oh, is mama's you pampered you, favorite child speaking you, out again? You think you can keep up, Buck? Gets the charger? I don't know. The 440? <laughs> no! Son of a gun! We didn't do that official. Let's do that official. Didn't do that official? Loser has to pay for dinner tonight. Well, you better be ready to pay for dinner, boy. Three, two, one, go! Come on! Son of a gun! He got me off the line! Come on, Buck! Oh, I dropped the gear! I dropped the gear! <laughs> oh, no! We're gonna get caught again, Buck! Mom's not gonna be happy! Oh, he spun out! Oh! Oh! <laughs> well, guys, welcome to the 1980s. We're gonna start a roleplay series on the 1980s about a year ago this time. We started a farming series on the 1950s, like literally a year ago in real life. It's been that long. It feels like it was yesterday, but it's been that long. And so I've been wanting to start another old school farming series. So this is the one we're starting. We figured we had the mods for like, you know, kind of the 70s, 80s era. It was a super fun era to farm, besides for farm economy being tough, but like a lot of the equipment and stuff's pretty cool. So me and Buck, we're starting a farm on the 1980s. So this is what we call Nelson Bros Farms, is what we're gonna call the series and our farm name. We gotta get a farm sign out front yet. Right now, as you can see in the upper hand corner, we got $11 million. We're gonna just start and buy just the normal equipment for the 80s, not be too cheap, and then eventually we'll, we'll kinda cut down our money and play like realistically where we're on a budget. We wanna get that cattle side going too, and so we're gonna figure out all this cattle side, stuff like that, and getting the cattle and row crop. Should be pretty fun. Right now, me and Buck live in the same house. It sucks. He's a nice guy, but it sucks living together. So one of us is going to move out and build a house somewhere on the farm. We're just, once one of us gets enough money saved up, that's when we build a house. I'm the one that's better with money, so it's probably going to be me. It'll for sure end up being Buck. To give you guys a tour of the farmstead, we have this old house built in 1909 by our grandpa. Mom grew up in the house, and then we grew up and took it over from grandpa. She never farmed. Dad never farmed. and We kind of just took it over from grandpa when he passed away four years ago. We have this nice machine shed that was built fairly new. It's got a large shop door and it's a 40 by 70. So it, it works perfect for the machines we'll have. So we have all the harvesters for dairy. We have the cattle operation over here. We have an old barn. I think this was built like right when the house was built. Over here, a couple monoslope sheds, just smaller sheds for the cattle, the Roman. Feed bunks there. And then we also have hog operation. This is this is kind of a finishing barn where we'll finish out a couple head of hogs over here. And everything cattle right now at the time period is, is pretty darn profitable. We do have a couple different bins for storage. This one is a 10 or 12 buck. What? Right. What? What grandpa always say this bin was? Ten or twelve thousand bushel? I'd presume twelve. I don't I don't know. Okay. The people wanna know. Okay, I think this is a twelve thousand or it's a ten thousand bushel people bin. People wanna know. They what got... are you talking into? You got your VHS tape that weighs thirty pounds? Yeah, giant camera. Just be nice to him, Buck. A little nicer no. than you were this morning to me. Huh? Well you deserve it every single time. Just be nice. No. This is probably the older shed. It was built in the 40s, and it's a nice shed, and it hasn't been used much. It's a commodity shed. And so we actually, back in the day, we if we had too much grain, we'd store corn in this building and stuff, and it worked great. And so we just use it kind of for overload and then just equipment. Works perfect. And then this is Buck. So this is Buck's specialty. He takes care of the calves. Buck, you want to tell the camera a little bit about it? Yeah, these are my moo-moos. They go to the 4 h shoes to get shows, and then I get ribbons, and I get money. So that's why I can afford a white Pontiac piece of garbage, because someone over there can't seem to quit driving a brick. Okay, and save okay. Money. Tell the story a little more fair. This guy got pretty lucky. He had a nice bread calf at, what was it, two years ago that he ended up selling for a lot of money. Some 4-H kid went and bought it for a ton of money. He got super lucky. We'll call it luck. Yeah, and where did I get that one from? That was the runt. You've gotten everything handed to you in life. I've had to work for my stuff. There's a reason this shed says keep out authorized personnel only. B.S. Buck. In the will? You see that will? <laughs> you got se you get 70% and only get 30%. Yeah, there's a How'd reason that for happen? that. I was the one. You I sucked up to mom and grandpa. Why don't you get out of bed before 10 o'clock in the morning? How about that? Then we'll start talking. And then on the back side, we also have 
a 600 head finishing building for hogs. So we'll finish them in this barn. Semis will come in, transport them out, take them to the slaughterhouse. So that's the farm tour. I absolutely love this setup. Like I could not have built this better myself. This whole map, Ashton Corners, was built by MRG Mapping. I hired him at Squad Built, and so he does some awesome work. I can't say much about it, but there's some cool stuff coming at Squad Built with American Farming. And so I could not have built this any better. Okay, so Buck made a big brother move, a little brother move. We're about the same age. Anyways, he purchased a combine, a new Holland TR-99. Comes with a six row corn head. I gotta talk to Buck, but we're gonna be buying three different tractors because we're gonna be doing a lot of livestock, a lot of crops. And so I'll buy one, Buck buys one, and then we agree on another tractor. There's a nice 4755 two-wheel drive here that we're gonna go after. Okay, 4755, that's gonna be our big boy. Okay, boys, so we got our load here. A Farmall M, I'll show it to you guys once we get back to the shed, and a Farmall 806 with a loader. These are gonna be kind of our two older tractors that just do everything for us, pretty much, as far as like chores go. And then Buck is gonna be coming with a load, the 4755. He's got a secret tractor you guys haven't seen yet, and he should be right behind me. One of the great things about this map is we're not building a farm. This farm we walked into is set up just perfect. Like, everything about it is perfect, and so we're not gonna change anything on it, really. In a couple of years, we may add some more sheds, stuff like that, but for right now, this is just, it's a really solid map. Okay, we'll hop in the 806, get her unloaded. There we go. So this is gonna be the chore tractor, pretty much. Be on the feed wagon, clean lots, everything like that. I think Buck also bought a skid steer. We'll get the old farm all lamb off. Oh yeah. Okay, we should be done with this trailer. I'm gonna see if I can't fix fit the trailer in the corn crib here. It is a tight fit, but I think it'll work. That'll do. Okay, so we gotta go pick up a couple more implements we bought. We bought a planter, a field cultivator, I think we bought a disc, the combine, some wagons yet. So we're just gonna pull them with our pickup truck back and forth from the dealership here. And there she is. Bucks 4020. He he loved a 50. He always loves the 5020s, but he bought a 4020, I think. And I got a field cultivator behind us. We got an old wheel wheel rich field cultivator. This should work good. Come on, bud. Mama Chevy can't keep up. Got a 350 in this thing, not a 454. <laughs> okay, we got to find a place for the field cultivator. For now, I'm just gonna have it sit outside. It's probably fine. Back her up. Get her unhooked. Oh, Bach, you're gonna destroy that Chevy, man. He'll be fine. He's under warranty. <laughs> so we got the old Sperry New Holland skid steer. And then we have the behemoth tractor, the John Deere 4755. Brand new tractor. And we got a 955 International Planner on the back. The 55 series, everybody has high hopes for this tractor. Two wheel drive, I think. I, I forgot to talk, ask the dealer, but I think you get options for front wheel assist on this. Me and Buck decide two wheel drive. It's gonna be our big tractor. Maybe later we'll get a front wheel assist tractor, but for now, this thing's gonna be awesome. We're not sure if we're gonna put it on the planter or what, or if we're gonna just have it as a field cultivator and like grain cart tractor, but this will be fun. So it's got a 15 speed power shift transmission. So going down the road, we're doing what, 20 mile an hour right now? So this thing hauls. What sucks about some of these sheds, not complaining, we got a lot of shed space, but fitting this international planter inside of them gets kind of to be a tight fit. And of course, we got a new hull and hay bind. We may actually get two of these, just because if we're gonna have livestock, we are gonna need like a lot of mowers, a lot of baling equipment, and we don't have much right now. We'll park this in the big machine shed. We actually got a ton of room out here. Buck was talking about building a Quonset, but I was like, Buck, what are we made of money or what? We can't afford a Quonset when we got all this space. Okay, we just got back with a load of wagons. These are old Parker ones. They're not new by any means. They're on like old John Deere running gear. Parker 2500, which I think they hold 250 bushels what the salesman was saying. These are gonna work perfect. Put them behind tractor. I'd actually like to buy just like one or two more of these. That'd be great. But delivery drivers, truck drivers coming with the new combine we got too. So that should be here any second. Hey, wide turn there, bud, eh? Well, you made it here. That's good. You called me a couple of hours ago, said you weren't sure if you were going to make it through the rain. Yeah, we ended up making it. I had a few adjustment problems we're going to have to figure out, but uh, we ended up getting this thing here nice and pretty. I'm getting too old to be doing this stuff anyway. Gotcha. I'm Grant, by the way. I didn't catch your name on the phone. Chet. Hat? Chet. Chet. Oh, C-R-M. Chet. Chet Elderson. Chet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chet Elderson. I've been, I've been custom hauling since the 70s. No. 
I've been, hang on, I can't remember anymore. I've been custom following since the 50s. God night. Well, how the heck do you get this loaded up is what I'm wondering. Oh, it's got a drop deck on her. Dovetail. Okay. You it swings more... up, swings back down. The only thing is that we couldn't for some reason. They did it for DOT standards. I think she sucked my half-wit pie hole. They had to set the header on here sideways, so we have to find something to get that thing off. Those DOT, they'll, they'll catch you. There's one guy around here, Gary. He, he owns a DOT, or he basically acts oh, like he owns it. Oh, we know about he, Gary. He, He's got a rap record with us truckers. Yeah. Every time we see him out there, we just keep driving. We yeah. don't even stop for him anymore. I know, I know. I, I Pretty much anything I'm holding illegally, I just toss in that orange triangle, crank her down to 30 mile an hour when I see him. He's like, he, <laughs> he can't do anything. <laughs> Screw <laughs> you, Gary, you know? Yeah, we, uh, we have a couple... Extra names for people like him. <laughs> <laughs> sure, the pleasant you names. You know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, they're spectacular. Hey, <laughs> you ever driven? Old school. You ever, you ever seen a Pontiac Trans Am? It's my brother's. Buck, check her out. I'm just doing some, some, you know, some nice work for him right now. He's, uh, he keeps. Well, you better not touch that car. That's a formula. That's I know. got the formula rims on it. Oh, you, well. 70, 71. <laughs> Like a 70. Here's the thing, chat. I keep racing this son of a gun. He keeps beating me somehow. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a little detuning. Maybe turn down the fuel screw a little bit. So next time we race, I don't get smoked. What are you racing him? Just a classic Dodge Charger. Ooh. What motor's that thing got in it? Oh, for some reason, you got a 383 intake on it. But yeah, it's a 440, all right. It's a big block. Yeah, you would think the Charger would run side by side with that thing. I don't know what the heck he's doing to that car, but he beats me every well, race. Well, are you able to keep the tires on the ground? Well, that could be a my issue, too. You only got 225s on this thing? What the heck's wrong with you? No wonder he ain't getting power down. Those are at least 280s on this thing. Gotcha. Well, I was going to put some weight in the back is what I was thinking, but maybe that's probably not You don't not need best. weight. You need grip. And for that, you're going to need some bigger rubbers. Okay. Let me say that old chap. Let me take that puppy first, man. Oh, chat. Yeah. Four feet on the floor? Chat, uh, he will murder me if I let you drive that thing. But, He'll murder me. I mean, he's not He's not here right now. I, I'd say, uh, go ahead, go ahead. I'll Just... figure out how bad of a driver you really are. Okay. <laughs> Let's just see how well she's hers. Here, hold my cigar, boy. I got it. Yep. Ooh, she's hot. Well, don't grab the other end, you moron. What the heck is wrong with this thing? I, I told you I adjusted the fuel screw. Yeah, you sure as heck did. Yeah, give me that light, boy. Yep. Well, don't smoke in the car. He's gonna get... He's hanging out the window. Get... Uh, okay. There you go. He definitely did something for that. I can't tell. Yeah. I back before he killed both of us. Can you open the door quick? Might as well. Done everything else for you. You want my social number, too? I wouldn't mind. That and a million bucks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chet, you, you truck any hogs? Yeah, I got myself a bull hauler. Oh, really? I got a load yeah. of hogs to buy later today here. You want to truck them? It's, a, it's literally 30 miles down the road. Only 30 miles is in I'm spending diesel or I'm spending time and money. Well, well, well. Just my schedule to make things work for you. Is well, that what I'm getting I, at I, here? I'm paying you, Chet. I'm paying you. You're paying me. You're paying me to haul this thing. You ain't paying me to get your hogs. You got to pay separately to get your hogs in here if you want me to haul them. Let's get this thing unloaded and then we'll we'll talk about it. Well, you're going to have to find something to get this sucker right here off because uh, I don't know how we're going to get this thing out without getting the combine running it over. Well, we'll load her in a bucket, do it. Probably should have thought about that a little better. What if we pull my flatbed trailer up next to your trailer, I slide the head onto my trailer, it's on my trailer, and then you can back the scene off and then pick it up off of my trailer. I don't care, it's not my stuff. I'm thinking if we push this bucket, just push it right on the trailer, this should work. We're gonna scratch it up a little bit, but it's really the only way of getting this thing off here. Keep going. Keep going, you're almost across. Yeah. I got it. I'd say I put the extensions in on that side, but I can't do it without putting in the other side. Yeah, I know. Here, let me see if I can get her off there. There you go. It's good enough. Okay, so since we bought enough stuff, enough tractors equipment to get ourselves started, we now set the money to 200000 Which, we're going to have to buy a ton of livestock still, so I think that's a pretty fair number. The place that I'm going to, they... I think those are all basically piglets, the ones that they're getting out on the trailers. They don't really got any of them that are 
grown, so I was kind of, I think they're also kind of a mix. Ah, got my cigar. I was kind of going to pick up uh, what they got. I don't really know. Unless you have anything specific or just fill the trailer. He's got a load with him. Whatever they have the cheapest, I'd say do. Okay. Go get on the road. I'll be back in about round trip here to there, two and a half, three hours. Okay. Don't go dying on me. Uh, no guarantees. <laughs> well, there's chat. Got her big. You want to get that gate open there, I got boy? it. I got it. Watch the flowers in the front. My wife, she won't be happy. You ain't good enough to have a wife. Man, I think it's ugly as my ex-wife. Well, chat, send the bill in the mail and I'll get you paid, man. Uh, oh, hold on, hold on. Boy. Don't run over one of them. Don't, hey, I'm hey. trying not to. I know, you just about took off his ear. Yeah, he'll live. We'll see you, chat. If I got anything else to haul, I'll give you a call. All right, boy, if I'm still alive, give me a ring. Okay, so we got 35 hogs hauled in. We got to feed these out here. This is where it starts. And then we got some barley over here that's ready to harvest. This is what we'll use for feed to start out. We got to get these guys some food here. And then these guys will be ready to go. And then eventually we get into some heifers. Start reproducing some heifers. And go from there. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching episode number one of the 80s. And hey, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, guys.